Good morning, everybody. How's it going? It's Friday. And we're going to visit our friends in the United States of America. I gotta bring a load down from Winnipeg down into uh, Minnesota, about halfway down to Minneapolis, uh, sort of around like the Bemidji area. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We're taking a sleeper cab just in case if things go wrong and things take longer than I have a bed to sleep in. But uh, I should be back tonight if everything goes right. Let, let's see. I mean, it's winter time, so let's expect things to not go quite as planned. How lucky do you feel this morning? Do you think she'll start? It didn't want to start yesterday because it wasn't plugged in. But I got it running, got the batteries charged up for a while, and then I plugged it in. This is the truck we're taking today, Unit 3056. We'll see. I should be back at a decent time. I mean, it's winter in trucking, so I'm not going to make any promises. Okay, I've made that mistake way too many times. We're going to see what happens, but we're going to try our best. So let's go see if this thing will start. I'm nervous. Stop digging at me. Stop digging at me. i got enough anxiety. Come on. Come on, girl. Come on. You and me are going to be friends all day, okay? All day. We're going to be friends. I'm going to treat you real good. Okay? I'm going to be real nice to you. I need you to start, please. <laughs> I know, I know. I didn't want to wake up today either. But I'm glad you decided to join me. Now you know why I'm a little nervous. These Volvos, I remember because remember I owned one just like this. We talked about this in yesterday's video. This is an exact identical truck to my old truck. And it would always have a hard time turning over in winter, even if I plugged it in, just like this. Okay, we're gonna let her warm up and then, uh, and then I'll talk to you then. I'm glad she's running. And look, no engine light. Oh, you're a special Volvo. Good, good, that's good to see. I hope that lasts all day. Since I'm gonna be over dimension today, I'll be wide, I've got permits for my wide load. Uh, we've got a blanket permit for Manitoba here. Obviously this is where we're based, we have our permits here. And I have a permit now for the state of North Dakota and state of Minnesota. I'm just looking at my routes because on, on an over dimension load, you have to stick to the route or the route that they, uh, that they assign to you. You can't go off the route, or if, if you get caught, it's a big ticket, big ticket. So, North Dakota, we can take I-29 all the way down to Fargo, and then I need to get into Minnesota. So we turn on to I-94, so my North Dakota permit permits me to pull this load down I-94, which is set high, I mean, down I-29, pardon me, to I-94, and turn east, all the way up to the Minnesota border. That's the only highway I'm permitted to drive on, and I'm pretty sure they'd be okay if I would exit the freeway to go to a truck stop to grab a coffee. I don't think I'll need to do that because I'm going to grab my coffee before we leave here. Uh, and I just like to get to my destination faster so that I get unloaded, and then I'll get a coffee on the way back maybe. We'll see what happens. It's going to be an exciting day. And then I have a permit from Minnesota here. And uh, once again, I have to follow a, a route so as soon as I get into Minnesota I can I got to get onto US 10 East so I could either take I guess highway US highway 75 from 94 on the east side of the Red River in Minnesota up to highway 10 or I can go down to highway 36 uh, 336 and take that north up to highway 10 highway 10 also runs east west uh, parallel with the 94. Once I get up to the 10, I take the 10 all the way down to the 59, which is in Detroit Lakes. Once I hit Detroit Lakes, I turn on to US Highway 59. Where is it? I'm looking at it here. US 59, just west of Detroit Lakes. And then I take US 34 from the 59, just over the north part of Detroit Lakes there. And I take that all the way into Park Rapids, Minnesota. Uh, where I'm going to be delivering. That is my approved route. Or is it route? Route, 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 route. You know what I mean. That is my approved path, my approved trail. 
anything other than that and uh, I'm looking at a big fine also within these permits I'm not permitted to drive at night I believe all right so I require 18 by 18 inch flags red flags front and rear traffic side of load I'm gonna put them on both sides of the load I just like people to know where the edges of my load are at no travel in inclement weather or no travel in poor weather bad weather bad visibility looks like we're gonna have a clear day today we're good no travel in hours of darkness movement must occur within one half hour prior to sunrise through one half hour after sunset allow all traffic to pass no travel on shoulders that goes for you too that goes for everybody not just me <laughs> vertical clearances are my responsibility towing vehicle must have two mirrors which reflect a rear view of 200 feet to the driver I do. All axle weights must be legal. For road construction, size and weight restrictions and travel conditions, visit this website or call 511. Uh, truck parking and rest areas are not to be used as staging areas for dollying down load. Okay, so I'm not supposed to drop my trailer anywhere. It says, uh, no travel in hours of darkness if trailer length plus load exceeds 53 feet. Uh, it's exactly the same hour thing before. No driving at night. Uh, da, da. must display a 12 inch by 60 inch oversized load sign front and rear remember how i said here in canada we can get away with those d signs the checkered red and white signs with a big d in the middle means danger we can do that here in canada in the u.s those aren't legal you have to have a, a like a sign that says oversized load not wide load it has to say oversized load and you have to be the same sign on the front and back and then uh, the 15 years says, nighttime travel is allowed if you're 10 feet wide and 120 feet long or less when properly lighted, but the height must be legal. All these rules. Well, we're gonna get down there well before the sun goes down, which means we should probably uh, go and pick up the load. I got a bobtail into Winnipeg, pick the load up there, tie it down, flag it, grab the paperwork and head on down to the United States of America. Let's see, that was for North Dakota, those rules. I actually have rules for Minnesota here as well. Every state has their own rules. Uh, Minnesota, no move, no movement if wind gusts prevent vehicle from staying within its travel lane. Well, that's pretty straightforward. I, I like that rule, yeah. Flag, Le the, the widest point of the load must be flagged and must have lights at night when exceeding nine foot wide. Okay, I'll have flags. Flag or lights at night every 20 feet along load trailer combination exceeding 75 feet long. All right, so this is going to be on one of those uh, roller trailers. I was telling you a little bit about this yesterday. The trailer tilts up and it's on rollers that are locked. And then once I unlock them, I drive forward and the load just plunk falls onto the ground. That's how I unload. Super easy. Drop it on the ground, get a signature, put the trailer back down, lock all the rollers again and book her on back here. All right, let's get going. Let's get going. We got to get there before it gets dark or we're definitely going to be spending the night in the truck. I'm all loaded up, tied down, flagged, ready to go. You want to see it? So they're big trusses. Let me get out of here first without slipping on the ice. So it's on a roller trailer like I told you. I'm going to roll it right off at the customer. We're wide on the other side. This side is not too wide, just a little bit. Just waiting here for my paperwork and then we'll be on the way. That's our load. So you can see we're hanging over probably about three to four feet there. I've got my flags right at eye level for any cars that uh, might come past me. But this is on the passenger side, so not very many vehicles will be coming past on this side. That's why they hang it over on this side instead of the other side. That's where more traffic passes by. Here we go. We're headed uh, west right now on the south perimeter on the south side of Winnipeg. This is Sage Creek, Winnipeg, right here. So a pretty normal looking load on the driver's side over here. Passenger side, we're gonna have to be careful. We're not hanging over four feet. That, that's no resume. We're hanging over about three. 
Humphrey. We're about 11 and a half feet wide. My seatbelt uh, light is blinking. I realize that. Uh, don't worry, my seatbelt is on and locked. But the sensor in there obviously is broken and it uh, it's thinking, or the sensor's not sensing that it's locked in. But don't worry, I'm locked in, I'm buckled in, I'm not gonna fall out. I'm wearing my seatbelt. Just a heads up for you. Okay, this is a little bit of a narrow road here. The engine brakes on these Volvos are so quiet, I can use them right in town. Did you even notice I was using it? It's not like my Peterbilt rolling through town. <laughs> Trucker Josh is here. I don't do that. No, I don't do Not in town. <laughs> don't hit the sign, don't hit the signs, okay. Just sort of gotta hug the dotted lines here on my left. There we go. Once we get through this little stretch, it's all highway all the way down to Fargo and into Minnesota. Then we gotta go, well, it's all interstate, even through Fargo. So after this little stretch, it's all interstate until we get to uh, US 10, way down in Minnesota. All right, don't hit the parked cars. That is the goal. Don't hit the parked cars. All good, all good. We made it. Uh, Interstate 29. U.S. interstates. This is relaxing. Slow winding turns. 75 mile an hour speed limit, but I can only do 60. Ah, the good old days, right? <laughs> it's good to stretch my legs a little bit out here. So I'm north of Grand Forks yet. I gotta go through Grand Forks. Probably gonna stop in there for fuel. I'm debating whether or not stop in for fuel now or stop in for fuel on the way back. I might just do it on the way back. I've got over a half tank right now. I've got about three and a half hours down to my delivery point and then it would be two and a half hours back to Grand Forks. I should be good. I mean, I don't like to risk it too much in, uh, in the cold, like I was talking to you yesterday in my pickup. Same thing in the big truck, even more so. You don't want to run out of fuel in the middle of nowhere on the interstate in a foreign country. <laughs> Though I am pretty familiar with the roads down here. I still don't want to be stranded. Ah, we'll figure it out once we get to Grand Forks. I could always stop in Fargo too. It's just a little bit further out of my way to go down to the Flying J there. I decided we're going to quickly fuel up now. Oh. We're in Grand Forks and I decided we're gonna quickly fuel up now. I don't wanna risk it, not in the winter time. So we got Flying J right over here. I don't know why the sign's way over there, but I guess that's closer to the highway. <laughs> so let's carefully drag ourselves in there. I just had a coffee on the other side of the border, otherwise I'd say we're gonna get a bean to cup. I'll get one on the way back. I'll be coming pack back through Grand Forks here. I'll take a little bit of a different route, but uh, we'll be meeting the I-29 at Grand Forks here. I won't have an oversized load on me then, so I don't have to go all the way through Fargo on the way back. Hopefully I can make it through these pumps. Look at that nice peat right there. Whew. That's nice, nice flat top. Maybe one day, maybe one day. Got a lot of career ahead of me yet, we'll see. Maybe. 
Gotta get a couple of kids first. Raise them up good. Diesel number one is this first pump. I hope I can fit through here. I can at least get to the pumps. I might have to back out, but... Mm, I should be able to fit. Right there. I think that's good. Tell the government I'm gonna fuel. Okay. I keep reaching for the clutch and for the key being on the, this side of the steering wheel here. It's over here on these trucks. <laughs> okay, I wanna be quick. Okay, I'm not even gonna run in for a coffee. None of that. Just quick, quick, quick. We'll get a coffee on the way back. This truck is acting up. Needed a parked regen. Why am I not surprised? Oh yeah, I used to drive one of these. That's right, that's right. There's a reason why I stopped driving one of these. I'm hoping it's not gonna be a bigger problem than this because it said it needed a, uh, oh, it's hot in here now. Needs a parked regen because of poor uh, DEF quality, which means that the DEF is fine, but the sensors are telling the computer a wrong story, a fairy tale. And the soot level is too high in my exhaust filter. So I had to stop and do a park regen. Which is burning daylight hours. The sun is going to be setting fast. And I'm not too sure. It depends on how long this is going to take. I'm not too sure if I'm going, going to be able to make it there before the sun goes down. Might have to deliver it in the morning. Good thing I got a sleeper, right? So if you know me, you know I'm not a, a real fan of Volvos. Uh, they're not my truck of choice. I mean, I'll drive whatever truck I'm given to, to drive and I'll be thankful for the opportunity to drive it. But from my experience, Volvos come along with a lot of problems and uh, usually electronical uh, sensors, engine light, soot level, constant parked regens, and that's just the experience I have. Maybe you have a better experience with them, but uh, I can tell you that if I ever bought my own truck, I would never, never buy a Volvo. And I'm not just saying that because I'm frustrated at this one right now. I'm not surprised that I'm in this situation right now. It's just, it seems every time I get into one, there's an electronical issue or something. The engine light or a sensor or something's going on. And now I'm burning daylight hours that are very valuable to me because I can't drive at night doing a parked regen, which means it's cleaning out my exhaust system in sort of simple terms. I can sort of understand why, because the truck's been pulling hard. I've sort of been driving into the wind today, and it's like I have a big sail behind me. There's not really very much aerodynamic qualities to this load. So it's using a lot of fuel, and it's burning a lot of fuel, which means it's building up a lot of soot in the exhaust filters and stuff. These parked regens usually take anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour. I guess we'll see what happens. If uh, worse comes to worse, I'm in a safe spot. I got food right here. And I'll just sleep right here. I'll continue in the morning if I have to. I don't know why that wiper is crooked. But we're just down the road from Fargo. That regen seemed to have done the trick. We got no more error codes on here, we're good to go, but I can't drive any further than Fargo because the sun is setting off to my right, and I've got 30 minutes after that point to park this thing, or I will be in violation of my permits. We don't want to do that. So we'll stop in Fargo. So we made it to the Stay Mart on the north side of Fargo. I didn't want to go further than I had to. The Flying Jay's on the south end of town, but I was running out of daylight. I've been here for a little while already, and well, not too long, and man, it gets dark fast, so I didn't want to risk it. Here we are, all the way in the back corner. I didn't want to inconvenience any other drivers by taking up two spots, so I took an end spot here, and I'm hanging over just a little bit over here. 
Not too bad though, if someone else wants to come in and park beside me here. But, uh, because of that regen, I couldn't make it. It would have been very tight, very close without that regen already, but uh, you know, I can't even lie, I'm kind of excited. <laughs> I like sleeping in the truck. I think it's fun. I don't know. I sort of feel like this is what I'm born to do, you know? Not sleeping in the truck, but trucking in general. And I'm very lucky to be able to uh, get the best of both worlds, having my city position, like a city driver position, which is my main primary position. And then every now and then, you know, getting the take off on an overnight. I'm sure they'll need me to go on some longer ones eventually. And when they do, I will answer the call and I'll go. <laughs> as long as I don't got any like uh, appointments or anything like that lined up. Cause that's the whole reason why I'm in my city position job is that I can be home for these doctor's appointments and fertility appointments. And we want to start a family. And then I want to be close to home so that I can be a, a big influential part of my kids' lives so that they have their dad at home. And not just to give my wife a hand with the kids, but so that the kids have that experience growing up. Dad's not far away, you know? Dad will be home tonight. Or if I'm on a trip like this, oh, dad will be home tomorrow night. Or, you know, they can, well, let me be in there. I can be a part of their life. And then who knows, maybe once they're older and grown up and able to stay home alone, or maybe once they're adults themselves, maybe. Yeah, maybe my dream of owning my own Kenworth W900 will come true. We'll see where the trucking industry goes. I mean, the way it's going right now. And all this talk about changing the whole world. And, yeah, it makes me a little nervous, but you know, I live in reality, and in reality, I know people are always going to need trucks. We're always going to need truckers. We're addicted to diesel fuel. So whether or not you think that's a bad thing or a good thing, I mean, I love the smell of diesel fuel and I love trucking. And I love the smell of the exhaust. I love everything about it. But I know uh, that it doesn't have the best effect on our climate around us. So I understand why... Uh, as our population grows out of control on this planet, uh, why they're looking for different options. I get that, but with that aside, you know, I want to be there for my kids, watch them grow up, and you know, one day I, I still have that dream to own my own, like, not just any W9 either. I want to own the W9. When I come rolling down the highway, I want you to see me a mile away and say, there's Trucker Josh. I know that truck. I want it to stand out. Like, it, it doesn't have to be like over the top, but I, I want it to be custom and I want it to be custom to me. You know, custom fenders, lots of lights, shiny, maybe even a custom sleeper. You know, my dreams, they go far and wide, but maybe it'll just end up being a regular 86 inch studio sleeper or whatever they come up with in the next decade or something. But yeah, yeah, we'll see. I was definitely born for the road, but, you know, you got to balance life. I love being at home with my wife, our dogs. I love being at home with our future kids, and we haven't even conceived them yet. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to find a happy medium. I forgot how amazing American truck stops are. Well, I just went in there to sniff around a bit, and, huh, they got everything everything you need for life pretty much pretty much you know what they say when in rome do as the romans do so when in america enough said <laughs> supper we're in the US, what, it's special. Good thing I brought everything along. I can get my video done here and everything and have it up to you in no time. The videos are a little bit delayed though, but uh, I can get it edited here at least. I got the time. I don't gotta move for another 13 hours. Well, I could move sooner, but the law says, according to my permits, uh, I shouldn't. And I have to go past Moorhead scale, first thing in the morning. 
So just in case they decide to be open first thing in the morning, I gotta make sure that I am not on the highway sooner than one half hour before sunrise. I'm leaving here at 7 a.m. All right. If I go a little sooner than that, I might get myself into trouble with the Americans. Their DOT don't mess around, man. Well, neither do ours, but I definitely don't want to get in trouble down here. And maybe they won't let me come back. And I'm very sad because I want to come back. I like it here. Anyways, uh, I'm going to get this done. I'm going to have my uh, American supper. Then head off to bed, get a good night's sleep. I'll probably watch some uh, Netflix yet, see what my dad is like. I think I got enough data. I, I have a pretty good data plan and I don't, I'm usually home every night so I don't use that much anymore, right? So thanks for hanging out. We're gonna start right here in Fargo tomorrow morning and go to Park Rapids, Minnesota. Drop these trusses on the ground, literally. Just roll them right off the trailer onto the ground. Get some paperwork signed. And book it back home empty. I'll see you tomorrow.